number one, I would like to call to order the Pasco County Board of County Commissioners meeting of March 26, 2019. I would like to remind everyone to please silence all electronic devices at this time. I would like to ask for you to rise for the invocation and pledge. Oh, merciful creator, your hand is open wide to satisfy the needs of every living creature. Make us thankful for your loving providence and grant that we, remembering the account that we, may, that we must one day give, may be faithful stewards of your good gifts. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. District 2, Commissioner Moore. Here. District 3, Commissioner Starkey. Here. District 4, Commissioner Wells. Here. District 5, Commissioner Mariano. Here. District 1, Chairman Oakley. Here. Now is the time for public comment. Citizens are given an opportunity to comment on any item coming before the board during this public comment section. The board also takes public comments, items placed on the future board agenda or other business under their purview. Public comment public, for public hearing items will be during the afternoon session at 1.30 p.m. Individuals speaking during public comment will be given three minutes to speak. After, <clears throat> after stating your name and address for the clerk, the timer located on the podium will start a countdown. After two minutes, one beep will sound, the light will change from green to yellow letting you know that you have one minute left. After the timer is, is up, two, minute, two beeps will sound, and the light on the timer will change from yellow to red, indicating three minutes are up, and you should finish your comments. At this time, um, we have the following people signed up to speak at public comment. I will call uh, the first three people if you could be ready to um, speak one after the other. Um, we have our tax collector, Mike Fasano, followed by Ron Orchard, followed by Deborah Pritchard. Good morning. Good morning, Matt, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Give me this opportunity. I won't be but a couple of minutes. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, there was a constitutional amendment on the ballot last year, if you recall, that did not pass. That had it passed, it would have had a negative impact to Pasco County by about $13 million. Um, uh, it was surprising that that did, one did not pass, but I guess to the good of the county. It was a constitutional amendment passed many, many years ago, if you recall, that would have given, um, if a county or a city adopted the ordinance an additional $25,000 homestead exemption, uh, or I should say up to $50,000, depending on what your ordinance stated, to, speak to our senior citizens 65 or older on a very strict limited household income. If I recall, it was brought up a few years ago and the fiscal impact would have been about $3 million to the county. As the tax collector, we get many calls from senior citizens who are on very limited strict incomes. These senior citizens have difficulty sometimes paying their taxes. Um, and I would appreciate if you would consider, and I want to emphasize the word consider, uh, looking at an, an ordinance that would bring in what many other counties have already adopted throughout the state, including counties just north of us, south of us, east of us, um, allowing our seniors on very limited income, 65 and older, uh, to, uh, to give them that additional homestead that would reduce the ad valorem taxes. I want to stress to you, this only would deal with ad valorem taxes, property taxes. It would not deal with non-ad valorem. It only, is, it only deals with ad valorem taxes, so it would not affect your non-ad valorem taxes. I'll give you a perfect example, and i got a minute to go. It's telling me here to sum up. Very difficult for a politician, but I'll do my best. <laughs> Give you a perfect example. A uh, gentleman who uh, is now being hit with a paving assessment, something that he didn't want or ask for, but it was done. 
So now his tax bill is showing that paving assessment. So now his tax bill that he had maybe was running about $300 a year is now doubled each year. And he's having a tough time. He truly is. Nicest guy in the world, by the way. But he's on very strict limited income. He would have fallen within this category and possibly brought his, non -ad, his ad valorem taxes down to almost nothing, but of course having to still pay for his non-ad valorem taxes, which is required. Anyway, would appreciate if you would consider this. This will help our senior citizens go a long way for those who are on very limited incomes, 65 and older, uh, older in Pasco County. Mr. Yes. Chairman, thank you, sir. Thank you for your comments. Ron Orchard, 6719 Manor Beach Road, Newport Ritchie. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. Ladies and gentlemen. Uh, what I'm here for today is to bring up some issues that we had around the Green Key Olsner area. We had a blitz this last weekend in there by Anthony and the building, uh, building inspection, I guess it is. We have to give them kudos. We've seen some changes within this short period of time that has happened since then. But we've been dealing with this for over two years and beyond in many of these issues. Uh, there's still many issues left, like uh, boats that are abandoned, houses that are abandoned, dilapidated in some areas. Okay. Some of the biggest issues we have is that we have code, building, police, permitting, not working together on all these issues. You may call on one and they say, it's not my area of expertise. We don't work there. Okay. Call code, if it was building, whatever. Okay. Nothing ever gets accomplished this way. Um, I'd like to propose that maybe the administrator, if that would be his job, set up maybe a, a central area that can control this. We have one contact point they would call into and they would make the distinguishing determination as to where this would go, as to code. They follow up with it. Is it taken care of? Isn't it taken care of? Rather than just let it float out there because it's called in. We also have the point where Jane Doe calls in and makes a complaint on an item. Okay. Two weeks later, Tom Jones calls in and makes a complaint on the same item. The first one drops off. Now they're just dealing with the second item. What we're doing is we're not building up a back here of what's going on. They look at it, oh, there's one complaint, rather than seeing a whole story for this particular area. Hopefully that could be addressed too. Maybe some task force need to be involved in, in doing this in, in Pasco all together. Because we're in one little area here. And I know there's more pockets in Pasco that are a problem area, just like we have. Okay? But we're told that there are a lot of areas in Pasco. I can't take care of your area. Okay? But if we clean up one area at a time and come back and back on these areas, don't just come two weeks, two weeks later, come back out and then drop it because it goes right back to where it was. We have a house that was cleaned up. It's been a month. It's going back in the same, starting back in the same condition it was because nobody follows up. So these are some of the things we like to get to. Uh, Mr. Chair. So I think if we, we can work with that, I would appreciate it very much. Thank sir, you. Mr. Chairman. Sir, are any of those... Yes. Are any of those houses condemned? Two of them had been condemned in the past um, due to circumstances that I'm not always aware of. They have let them come back. Come back. The fees go away. They come back, and they're okay. going back in the same condition. Same condition again. There's, okay. We have some issues in that department, so hopefully Mr. that's Mariana. getting fixed. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I want to say, you know, Mr. Orchard and Mrs. Orchard, we, we took a ride with them. We had code enforcement, the sheriff's department out there, building officials, et cetera. We toured the whole area. We took a whole list of all the things and continually, you know, Micah Tharp leading the way is like, got a list of all these things. Uh, we've got a direct line where you can call Amanda anytime as you know. She'll take the information in and process any new information. So it is a work in progress, but I want to tell you our code is doing a phenomenal job working as best they can with what they got with the rules that are in place. So it's may, it may be disjointed for you to go, but again, if you just relay everything to Amanda, she'll get it off to, the, to Micah, he'll get it out to where it needs to go. We'll keep on rolling and keep them under pressure. But I appreciate, I, and, I, and I do appreciate your feedback every step of the way. I know they have been working on it. We were told not to call Amanda, so I just didn't you, who, I didn't call you that. You call Amanda any time. Yeah, All right, exactly. thank not you. Not a problem. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you. Following Ms. Deborah Pritchard is Julia Pauls.
Sherry Robertson and Bill Fuller. And just a reminder to state your name and address for the record. Good morning, I'm Deborah Pritchard, 23527 Turtle Lakes Lane, Lutz, Florida. Um, our family has been a 17 year resident here in Pasco County. We have had a tremendous quality of life with our children. We have a daughter now at UCF and a, a son who's a senior at Sun Lake, um, you know, involved in the community, Little League, Cub Scouts, Girl Scouts, diving, swimming. Special note, I want to thank Mike Moore for helping me with the diving boards at Land Lake Recreation Center two years ago. My son um, finished second in regionals and first all-conference this year. So Excellent. congrats. Uh, thank you. Um, and go Knights to your daughter. <laughs> go Knights. Yeah, go Knights. Yeah, exactly. They almost got in basketball. Okay. That anyway. was good. <laughs> um, we attended the developers meeting about the proposed gas station on the county um, corner of County Line Road in Livingston. It was last Monday, the 18th. Um, curious how they had it the Monday during spring break when a lot of people were out of town. But anyway, um, talking to the engineer there, they said they had just resubmitted new plans for that project a week before. So at the developers <laughs> meeting, we're looking at old plans. The new plans didn't even hit the website until the 19th. So basically it was a big waste of our time going to this meeting. Um, that being said, there's so many problems with these plans that haven't been addressed, and I'm not getting anywhere with Brad Tipton or anyone else. You know, we talked on the phone before with Catherine Starkey. Um, the developer basically told us it's going in, like it or not. I refuse to believe that. First of all, the warranty deed for that property says they cannot have a well. The plans still have a well. In 2006, the county commissioners voted unanimously to put an RES-3 designation on that property. Somehow that's gone. Because if it had an RES-3 designation, it could only have 15,236 square feet um, developed. This thing has 26,700 square feet, and that's not counting driveways. This thing is huge. It's six pumps right on the corner of a residential neighborhood. So I'm here just to voice my concerns about that because this, it's, it's huge and I don't understand how it's being okay. But from what the developer told us Monday, it's a done deal, which I refuse to believe. Okay, all right. that's all Thank I got. Thank you. Um, when you're done, will you go inside and leave your contact information again with Michelle back okay. in my office? Okay. All right, thank you. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Julia Pauls, and I also live off of Green Key at 6641 Del Prado Terrace. And I'm here to address, um, I, I agree with everything the Orchard said, plus I want to address the um, flooding on the streets. That flooding is absolutely terrible. Um, <clears throat> The flooding, it floods tremendously. I have called down to the county and asked them to come out when it was flooded. And they addressed it by putting up those orange and white horsey things so that nobody could get in and out of the street. And of course, I was blocked in because the rain comes all the way up my driveway. Um, there are potholes that have, that have, there are potholes that have been patched. Um, there's a large indentation at the end of my driveway that patching won't fix. And I just want to know when the last time someone came out and did those roads. I have talked with several of the neighbors, and they said that the roads haven't been done in over 30 years. Um, there is, there's some properties that are within 500 feet. That are, new homes are going to be built. Over $200,000 per home are going to be filled built and they're going to be it's 66 of them that they're proposing to be built right there off of green key at right there on the corner of manor beach over in that cul-de-sac over there the the traffic that's up and down that street is already horrific they speed through all of that the streets need to be paved we we're talking about 66 more families coming in so families are one and two and they're talking about having the large rvs these streets have to be fixed they have to, this has to be addressed, not with the orange and white horses, not with um, just patronizing us over the telephone. They've got, they've got to get out here and they've got to do something about this. Um, I haven't talked to Amanda 
<laughs> but I've heard that they saying that you can't talk to Amanda. But um, there needs to be a letter sent out to the residents in that area to tell them who to speak to and to get, so that we can get together because we are starting to get together and we're gonna, we, we need something done. And okay. that's all I have to say. That Mr. Cavallo, you have someone to check with her now? Yes. Maybe Ansley or? M Mr. Chairman? If yes. I could, ma'am? We could look at doing a regional paving assessment in the area. Um, I need a petition leader for that. So if you talk to Ainsley, he'll probably get with you as you, as you go to the back of the room. But what I'd also like to bring up to the board is I did ask to get a look at Green Key. Now, we just hired our paving assessment contractors uh, at the last meeting. So now we have a contract in place and we need to schedule these things. But I've suggested we actually work with the city of Newport Richie to pave Green Key, put a trail going out there just like we did with Hudson Beach, mm -hmm. and, and fix the drainage of the stormwater. I mean, with storm surge on the coast, there's going to be some flooding still, but if we can drain it out quicker and get it down there, we'd be better off. So hopefully we can keep that project going. But if you get with Ainsley in the back, we can get you, get you working and we'll get to make, make that happen. Okay. Thank okay? you. Thank you. Ainsley, he, he's right back in the back, so thank you. Ms. Sherry Robertson. Thank you for allowing me the time to talk. Um, I am one of the neighbors where they're putting in the 7-Eleven. Just one moment. I need your name and your address for the record, please. Sherry Robertson, 1042 Livingston Road, Lutz. So they're putting a 7-Eleven on our corner. It's a residential area. I understand the lot zone commercial. It's still a residential area. They are going to raise the lot up. The water comes from down our road, across my property. There's a ditch that goes back into a canal and a lake that you're allowing a gas station on. <coughs> they are putting in a little retention pond. When we get a lot of rain, the canal overflows, goes underneath my shed, and up to my fence. So their little retention pond is going to overflow so you're going to take all the water from pumping gas into the retention pond, into the canal, into the lake. We have, I have three tenants that border that 7-Eleven that have toddlers, school-age kids that need to be in bed at 8 o'clock. They're going to hear all kinds of music and noise coming from this gas station at night. The kids are never going to get to bed. We're going to have my driveway. You have to look at the plans. Only one way in on County Line, one way out on Livingston. There's six gas stations in that area already. When you come out on Livingston, my driveway is the first driveway. That means they're going to be trying to turn around on the septic tank from the park, or they're going to be coming down our road at night with lights flashing in all the mobile homes. When they go in there and come out one time, they're going to go all the way down the road to racetrack gas station. Ma'am, I'm sorry. I don't think Mr. Oakley heard it. Whoever has their cell phone on, please turn it off. Oh, Steve. <laughs> oh, Steve. <laughs> sorry, Steve. <laughs> don't turn it off. <laughs> go ahead, ma'am. So they're going to come out, race, they're going to come down Livingston. My driveway is the first <coughs> driveway. They can't, they hate it. to go back south. They can't go back south because they can't cut across the traffic. They can't go back west to go home. They are going to either come down my driveway all day, all night, shining lights in the mobile homes, all the noise, or they're going to have to go all the way down to racetrack at the end of the road turn around at racetrack, come all the way back again. They're going to do that one time, and they are never going to stop at that gas station again. There's no way somebody wants to put a lot of money into it. There's no way for that station there to succeed. So we, we don't know what we're going to do about it, how we're going to do about it, but okay. thank you very all right. much. Thank you for your comments. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Bill Fuller. After Mr. Fuller, I have Patricia Higgins, Kimberly 
I'm probably going to hurt this last name, is Wasowicz and Francis DeRosa. Yes, sir. My name is William Fuller. I live at 15400 Bermondsey Street, Hudson, Florida. Uh, I'm here because I've got problems on the street, which I've been talking about before for the last couple of years. We have a lot of drug activity on the end of the road. We've had called the Sheriff's Department. By the time we get out the phone, it's quieted down because somehow they know the sheriff's around the way. Now, the sheriffs will go up there. Sometimes, they'll, whenever they feel like they go up there a couple of times, they stay there five, two minutes, turn around, drive out, nothing's done. As soon as they leave, trouble starts up again. I try to contact Chris Naco, and every time they get a they never, they never call back. I never hear nothing from them. I try to contact the sheriff's department numerous times to keep you on hold, and nothing's ever done. And I got, I got a place next to me where the, the uh, elderly gentleman passed away. His grandson's living there now. We reported that he's got 10, 15 cars in there. A while ago, there was a shooting there. By the time the cops got there, they'd all took off and they were gone. And now they're back again. There's nothing to be done. Something's got to be done about it before somebody gets killed on that road or somebody gets hurt real bad on that road. Thank you. All right, thank you. Mr. Chairman, yes. Mr. Mr. Steinsteiner, and while I appreciate the comments <laughs> every meeting, I mean, this is something that needs to go straight to the sheriff's office. This board does not oversee the sh No, no, you can't come back up. <laughs> the sheriff's office does not, or the, this board does not oversee the sheriff's office. Chase can that, you know, that's, so, that's correct. The only thing the board can do is request the sheriff. I know. So I think we need to get you pointed in the right direction because, again, this board has, has no authority over the sheriff's office whatsoever. They have a separately elected yeah. sheriff that oversees the deputies. We do not oversee the deputies that go out. So I just think it needs to be on the record that whereas we appreciate it, I don't want you to waste your time because we can't do anything with that sh with the sheriff's office. So Chase, I think the gentleman just went out and spoke to yeah, Chase. To yeah. That's the route it needs to go. So I just, okay. I just feel bad that you, you're coming to us, but we just don't have any authority over that. Yeah. So it's getting taken care of. It looks like. Okay. Miss Patricia Higgins. Please state your name and address, please. Patricia Higgins, 15400 Bermondsey Street, Hudson. <clears throat> Hi. <laughs> I'm back again. Sure. This month I could make it. Um, we're still having the same problems. There's such a mess on that street. And these people don't have the intelligence of a, intelligence of a peapod, I don't think. When you'll take your child on a four-wheeler, you're on the four-wheeler, and you've got him on a toy pulling it, a plastic toy pulling it on a rope. What's that intelligence tell you about them? You know, I mean, it's just ridiculous. We've called the sheriff. We've called Chris Darko. Nothing. They don't even listen to us. So where else do we go? We've gone to him. I know you just said that we shouldn't talk about it. So the other thing I have to complain about, again, after 14 years, is Bruce Bumstead uh, on Cary Lane. He went to court. They gave him an extension on the time and told him he wasn't to use his grader. Any place on the property wasn't supposed to touch it. He doesn't. Not during the day, but on the weekend and at night. This guy is vicious. What is it going to take before Pasco County does something to him? What kind of pull does he have with the county? These are, these are complaints I made 14 years ago. Now look at the shape I'm in as far as help. It just keeps going down because the only other thing I'm thinking, what's going to happen when this guy pushes an older person to the boiling point? Is somebody going to have to get killed on that street? Him or somebody else? This guy is a time bomb. 
He needs to be dealt with somehow. You take him to court, doesn't do any good. They give him an extension. And he does what he wants. He's a weekend warrior, night warrior. When code enforcement's not there, Bruce is there. Thank you. All right. If you would, ma'am, Chase Daniels is walking back in if you just talk with him. And maybe if, you've, if you see him doing it on the weekend and, it's a, and you think it's a direct violation of what the court's going through, film him. Okay. All right? But Chase is right in the back there. Straight back is Chase Daniels. He'll talk to you about it. Okay. Miss Kimberly Wasawix. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Tried. Good morning, everyone. Um, I live at uh, 15407 Bermondsey Street in Hudson. And the reason I was he here today was <clears throat> the condition of the roads. And it's already been addressed and taken care of. So thank you for your time. Francis DeRosa, and then following Ms. DeRosa is Loretta Lynn, Dan Callahan. Good morning. My name is Francis DeRosa. I live at 1430 Davenport Drive, Newport Ritchie, Florida. I'm in Chelsea Place. I'm one of the original owners, um, 27, 28 years there. And we love what Pasco County has been doing to help our, our fellow uh, neighbors here and I think you guys are doing a great job. It seems like my complaint might be minor to you but when you have to live through it day after day, um, the Irish pub that opened up on Mitchell Boulevard, um, their music is so loud in our community. Our houses are almost 3,000 square feet. Air conditioned, TVs, you know, a lot of activity in the house and when you can hear microphones and you can hear the DJs and you can hear people speaking and you can hear the bands going all night long. It's very aggravating. When, you, when you're when you trying to go to sleep, people are trying to go to work the next day. Fortunately, I don't have any babies in the house, but my neighbors, I feel for them who have babies. They have every sound soother going in that house to drown out the noise. I am not saying let's not have um, businesses there. We need businesses in Pasco. We need places, good places to eat. We need good places to go to but not at the expense of the people who have been there. We're neighbors. If we can't act neighborly towards one another and, and be understanding that people have lives. You know, I'm not a bar person, I don't drink, but I don't condemn it. I, I say, go out, have a good time, but not when I can hear you a quarter mile away from there in my house as if you were right next door. It feels like my neighbors are having these block parties and yet you look out the doors it's all dark, there's no one home, it's quiet, it's peaceful, and then they start with the noise. And it just seems like they're not giving us any consideration whatsoever. And keep in mind, I'm from New York City, been there most of my life, grew up in the Bronx, I know what noise is. I'm a very loud, noisy person. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so I'm hoping you guys could appreciate what we're going through as taxpayers, heavy taxpayers. Um, don't chase us out of here. You know, not, I understand it's a business. Keep the business going. Either put in sound stations that are going to absorb the noise level or tune it down a little for us. Three days in a row for St. Patrick's Day was a bit overbearing. So that's all I have to say. I appreciate your time. Um, this is my district. I have a, I have a quick, quick question. Um, did, has anyone gone, have you called in and have we gone out and done a noise study? Because we do have, decibel requirements that they shouldn't exceed. Well, I don't want to jump in line or anything, but we have neighbors who are right next door. They have more of that information, okay. detailed right. information, that they can explain to you just on code. what's going on with that. I just don't want to read the website because I decibel. thought I was the only one who was feeling this. But on our website, and a lot of people work so they couldn't come, um, but they have more information concerning the actual permits involved with that. Um, so I'm hoping you guys could do something Are about they going to come up and speak? Yeah, yeah they're on the Okay, list. all right. We'll, we'll hear what they have to say on. and then... At the same time, Mr. Chair, there's, we have somebody from Code Enforcement that's yeah. back there that could actually... The gentleman with his hand up? Can actually have that discussion you'll go outside with, with him, he'll, he'll okay. take care of that issue. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right, thank you. Hi, Loretta Lynn, 
1541 Haggard Hill Drive, Chelsea Place. Um, yeah, I was wanting to ask that you could investigate um, how the event permit process is and verify if noise wa ordinance waivers are actually offered. Um, and does the permit specify to law enforcement when they go out on a noise complaint whether they can violate that noise ordinance or not? And that they enforce the noise ordinance. Um, and also that non-emergency complaints are being logged. I, from what I can find out, they're not being logged very well. Um, that three-day event that happened at Fiddler's Green, you know, it was announcements and music till midnight. I mean, it's it, being <coughs> approximately half a mile away, I shouldn't hear it as if it's in my garage. I mean, it was, it was really loud. Um, the decibels were not measured. Uh, code, code enforcement's not open on the weekends. Okay. And I was told from the sheriff's office they have access to one decimal meter, but it's not readily available. Um, so they don't, they didn't do that. They didn't test the, the decibels. Um, I spoke to a deputy on Sunday and he told me that they had a permit and I asked him repeatedly, well, does the permit allow them to violate the noise ordinance? And his answer, over and over was just they have a permit. He would never actually tell me whether they can violate the noise ordinance. I don't believe they can. Um, I have gone <laughs> to code enforcement. I went to permitting, trying to find out about the noise ordinance and if they're actually violating it, if there is a waiver being given, which I wouldn't quite understand why we would give a waiver to violate a noise ordinance. And I understand it's a it's a business, but they're surrounded by six residential communities that are all within a half a mile or less. So, um, so I, I would just ask that you review that process and see if the noise ordinance is being adhered to. And um, logging the calls, I made four calls over that weekend, and there's the um, the neighboring community and I looked, checked on those on the log on the sheriff's site and only one call was even logged. So they're not actually even logging it. I just would like you to have the peace and quiet <laughs> and comfort in our neighborhood. And So um, if you and your neighbor could go around to my office and leave your contact information and I'll, I'll investigate that a little bit and then we can have another conversation. Okay? It's just okay. around back Thank and you. ask for Michelle. Thank you. Name and address, sir. Dan Callahan, 7108 Daggett Terrace, Newport Ritchie. I've been told that the former county executive, John Gallagher, made the statement that he wanted to see Pasco County become the new Pinellas County, which could be interpreted to mean concrete and pavement and developments, industrial parks and businesses taking up all green spaces, with a few exceptions like the Brooker Preserve and Pinellas. Uh, to benefit tree huggers and other echo idiots. Remember our motto to attract tourists in Pasco County? It's only natural. Well, that's been replaced seriously with the motto, let's play sports. Congratulations on furthering John Gallagher's dream or nightmare if you're a person who came to Pasco because it was green and still wild and loving the natural Florida that brought us here. As you know, even if you choose not to listen, my focus is to save the Saranova Wilderness Track from being sliced and diced by the road to nowhere, but developments. Yet what if the Saranova is lost and your gaze turns to diminishing the Starkey Preserve? We must someday settle for our county and state parks, all that will remain of green Florida and Pasco. <coughs> Anyone who travels Route 54 between Routes 41 and 19 knows it's now bumper to bumper, slow rolling traffic with new stoplights popping up like mushrooms. And it will get worse with extended delays beyond the early morning and evening traffic jams as all those empty, newly built houses get filled up with people needing to travel south to find decent jobs. I guess the 45% of Pasco citizens who are in poverty or are those who are carless and retired, but they too shall pass, leaving families working two or more jobs to be human lemmings. And when will the boom again turn to bust and the money spigots into your pockets turn off. Here's an excerpt from the report of the Project Arthur proposal from section, 19, uh, section 9. 
The overriding goal in Project Arthur Parcel B is to create a quality community design that promotes alternative transportation networks and travel by multiple transportation modes, and therefore is not totally dependent upon traditional vehicular roadway lanes. Vehicular travel time should not be the driving force behind the quality of life in the community. And also from Section 9, quote, again, the rapid movement of vehicular travel through the community is not the primary method to achieve a sense of place, unquote. So how does Ridge Road Extension fit into that statement? Have you given up on intelligent growth principles? Have you ceased any thoughts that developers earning millions should pay a decent fee to our county for the new libraries and schools and government buildings we now need? I guess there's not much incentive for developers to pay you to control their greed, or much incentive for you to curb your greed as you become wealthy at the people's expense. Thank you, sir. Alan Rose, followed by Donna Bryan, followed by Kelly Miller. Good morning. My name is Alan Rose, 10221 Hilltop Drive, Newport Ritchie, Florida. This morning I come to you in full support of the Ridge Road Extension Project. I understand the environmentalist, environmentalist concerns, and uh, I have continued to bring uh, projects to you throughout the years on how to bring more environmental solutions, add more green spaces, add more beaches, protect our marine environment, all to you. I have a, everything from Robert K. Reese Memorial Park Green Key area, <coughs> redoing that, to the Maritime Master Plan. We have 22 miles of coastline that we do not pay attention to. We need to have this evacuation zone I, I live out here, and I know I've dealt with evacuations throughout my years of what I do. And we need to have that. That will make a huge difference when we get that bad storm, that we can evacuate in a timely manner. Because what you have right now, as everyone tells you, all of our roads, 52 and 54, are now plugging up because of the, the growth. And we like that. That's good for us, good for our communities. We're happy communities. But we need to consider the evacuation, especially from the West Market area. They have to be able to, to evacuate. And that Ridge Road extension is critical. It will make a huge difference in the ab ability for us to evacuate. And over time, I brought to you and what I think will satisfy most of the uh, environmentalists, because you've already set aside 50 acres that would compensate for the 50 acres you're going to be changing. But what I brought to you and what I suggest we follow up on and make happen is creating a marine sanctuary and an aquatic preserve for all of Pasco County. We have a 22-mile coastline. I can bring it to you. I can help you get there. We missed $26 million in funding last year from the state of Florida. We missed over $100 million in the federal government funding that was available for us. These funds are available and can be attached. I've met with county people. And then it got changed from one, one group of people that were in charge of this to another, another section and the engineers, I think it is. I haven't seen things get done, but they can be done, and they, we can attain funding. And I mean funding not in a small 100,000 parcel. I'm talking we can attain millions of dollars to help get this done. But we need the county commissioners to say, get it done. Here, I'm willing to put in my time and volunteer to help you get this done. You just have to ask me, and I will help you. you just give me some space up here. Give me one or two days a month and some people I need to talk to, and I'll make the phone calls, I'll make the connections, and I'll get you the money, and you will, all you have to do is say yes. The, your primary, the first place I would go to would be Green Key. Robert K. Reese Memorial Park, it's got such huge potential. It's a pretty little park right now. You could bring sandy beaches right along, protecting the mangroves out there, and the, the, it would help all of your citizens, it would help your flooding, and, and this will also attain the flooding problems we have throughout our coastline. Thank you for your comment. Mr. Chairman, Alan, if you would stay for a second, because I was going to be reaching out to you. I, I got a call just two days ago about someone who was a citizen appointee for the uh, Restore Act Committee, Robert, Bob Robertson. He's going to be resigning and put his resignation letter in. And I was going to call you to see if you'd want to serve on that committee. Would you like to serve? Absolutely. I'd like to nominate Mr. Uh, Alan Rose to be on the committee. Second. 
I got a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Um, say aye, please. Is that, wait, is that allowed? Do we have to publicize that or anything? No. You're looking at us funny. Well, yeah. I haven't seen a resignation letter yet. <laughs> Okay. One. So you've got somebody, uh, until that comes in, you really shouldn't be appointing someone to the board. Um, he said it. We all received it. I'll just get it. Did, okay. Yeah. Be um, but it's up to, you know, if they're board appointments, it's up, to, appointment. it's up, it's it's up to you all. All right. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Can we hire him part-time? Motion passed. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know call call the motion? Yes, motion passed. I did and call they all motion. voted. And a second. Donna Bryan, 8015 Ernst Road. Good morning. I'm back and I'm sure y'all have missed me. <laughs> <laughs> I have several issues I want to discuss with the board this morning. One is raising my taxes again. Um, this is for the flooding problem you have. You've raised my taxes two years in a row. And I can't afford to have my taxes raised again. I'm on a fixed income raising a child without support. And there are many elderly in this county uh, who can't afford to eat, much less buy prescriptions and raising taxes again will further put a burden on them. Many single families are raising children here, have a hard time making ends meet with low paying jobs and cannot afford the tax increase. Uh, unless, of course, you're trying to increase the homeless population. Um, the problem with the flooding is way too much building and no plans to counteract the flooding. With no trees <coughs> to drink up the water and the drain base is clogged and nobody thick cleans those, um, they're not maintained properly, it causes flooding. And I am highly objecting to my taxes being raised again. Okay, I'm willing to do a protest for these taxes. Or better yet, Jack will volunteer to pay my taxes. Right, Jack? Yeah. Uh, I do not believe the homeless count is accurate. I believe there are more than 686 homeless people in the county, considering all the homeless families living in the motels and the ones the cops chased out of the county, threatening them with being arrested for vagrancy. And I'm not just talking about the county sheriff's office, I'm talking about the little dwindling sheriff's office uh, cops too. Um, I'm furious that telling homeless all the information is confidential, and then you all report it to the newspaper, or somebody reported it to the newspaper. That was not very nice, putting um, the homeless camps in the newspaper. How do you expect these people to trust us and help them when you expose their information? It takes a lot to get trust from these people. Doing that was not right. And I'd like to remind you that um, I'm sad to see Paula O'Neill leave. Very sad, because she was a good clerk. Um, I'd like to remind some of you commissioners that you're up for re-election next year. And believe me, the public is watching, especially me. I'm going to be very honest with you. I'm watching. So you really need to earn your re-election. And for the county attorney, I'd like to thank you all for finally stepping in to take care of that other issue in Zephyr Hills. That's it. Thank you. All right. Thank you for your comments. Ms. Kelly Miller. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Speaking today on behalf of R3, my name is Kelly Miller, <clears throat> 5020 McCaslin Drive, Newport Ritchie, Florida. As the former chair of the MPO CAC, Commissioner Starkey's representative on the T BARDA, and appointed as the PASCO rep by Mayor Hernandez to attend the FDOT trip for the 275 corridor in St. Louis two years ago, I'd like to voice my educated opinion. Since there wasn't an MPO or a CAC meeting this month, I understand that you have a very important decision to make today about <coughs> wrapping our buses. No matter what company you choose to go with, 
I ask you to keep the size of the wrapping of the buses small. Small enough to look at the awesome green color that has been branding our county now for the last several months. Branding our county with a green bus is smart and attractive. Simply put, please keep as much of the green on the bus as possible. Thank you. Thank you. I have no one else signed up at this time for public comment. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak at this time? If so, you can come forward. Seeing none, we we'll move on to the next order of business is consent agenda. I have the following items uh, pull. C9, pull and revise. C33, withdrawn. C35, withdrawn. C44, pull and revise. C6, uh, pull and revise. C13, pull and revise. C39, withdrawn. C37, withdrawn. C11, pull and revise. I have a motion for the remainder items on the so consent. Second. Got a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 And Chairman, real quick, I apologize, yes. but C28 has the wrong district on it. We did just approve it, but if somebody can just, can we can we change that, Clerk? With do we need, we don't need another motion, do we? Okay. It says District One. I think it's either it's either I think no. it's District Four. I'm pretty sure. It's it's definitely not wrong. The record can be clarified that it's Commissioner. It's Commissioner okay. District. What's that? Okay. Four. Is it four? Yes. Thank you, Commissioner Thank you. Wells. Good morning, Commissioners. Paul Baracaldo, County Administration. Uh, we are uh, revising this memorandum to authorize the County Administrator to execute the agreement with PHSC for the use of their facilities for the workshop upcoming on April 2nd. Move approval. Second. Got a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed like sign. Motion passed. Uh, C44. Good morning, Commission. Bramford Adumwa, Director of Public Works. Uh, we are revising item C44 to remove two extra zeros in the funding amount in the fiscal <coughs> impact statement in the agenda memo. Okay. Move for a little note of change. Second. Got a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Motion pass. C6. Go on, revise. Good morning, Nikki Spiritos, County Attorney's Office, C6. We have a modification on page two of the memorandum, correcting the dollar amount to $179,711. Move approval is revised. Second. Have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed like sign. Motion passed. Thank you. Thank you. C13. Good morning, Denise Hernandez, Planning and Development. Item C13, uh, the first page of the public hearing agenda was revised to show June 19th as opposed to June 18th for the public hearing for the board in June due to the municipal elections and uh, House District 38 elections. Move for approval is revised. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, like, sign. Motion passed. Uh, C39, C11, full and revised. Um, this is uh, because I am an appointed member to the local workforce board and my name is not on the list. So um, we just need to add my name onto the list of members on the local workforce board. And I'm, I'm working on a meeting with Jerome and others here at the county just to, um, just to discuss governance issues with the workforce board. Second. So I got a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Motion pass. Okay. And it's going to Mr. Chairman, out. the original the original motion included your, the addendum that was on consent. Uh, the the motion for the consent agenda included the included addendum that, but you addendum just added, consent. right? Yeah. Yes. Correct. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. Correct. Thank Sorry. you. Yes. Yeah. Well, we made the motion. Yes. <laughs> <That's fine. laughs> um, well, we're on. We got a time certain at 11 o'clock. 
Are they ready now, or is it? I believe they are here. Jerome, I, yep, they're, they're here. If you're here, way. then we can go ahead with that item. R1. <clears throat> Welcome. Good morning, everyone. Jerome Salatino, uh, President and CEO of uh, Pasco Hernando Workforce Board. And with me today, I have a couple of our team members. I'm here to do a brief, very brief presentation on the Workforce Reentry Program. This is the program that the County Commission funded through the Pennies for Pasco's uh, tax. Uh, I have John Malley with me, who's running the program for us, as well as most of you know, Jessica Waitman. And then one of our success stories, uh, Kevin Glasser, I'm going to let him talk for just a few minutes, but I'll be very brief. And just be uh, as you know, this program was designed to allow us to be able to work with individuals in the community that typically we were not funded to be able to provide those services. So this allows us to work with them, people with multiple barriers, um, in some cases very difficult, um, very hard to place individuals in a lot of cases. Um, this program also allows us to go ahead and connect with those employers who did typically want to get wrapped up in a lot of the federal paperwork and requirements that we have through our organization. So it opens the doors to any PASCO resident trying to help them re-enter the workforce or enter the workforce for the first time. Just to show you a few of the numbers and how we've been progressing, uh, to date we've had about 281 people inquire into the program. Uh, we've also been very fortunate, I'll point down to the bottom here, 28 individuals out of our goal of 50 individuals to be placed nine on-the-job training agreements with employers that we've done, and 19 direct hires. So the program has been very successful. We started in Oct um, October, and uh, we're well ahead of pace to meet our goal of 50 individuals placed. Next slide, please. Just to show you a few of the businesses that we've been working with that participated with the program. Uh, one of the employers is uh, actually Paul Aeropower, who our success story. Uh, Mr. Glasser is going to talk a little bit about and then moving through quickly for you all just some of the different positions that we've been able to work with individuals to try to help get placed and again this program has been a big success for our organization and for the community as a whole and for the County Commission because we have been able to directly work with individuals that again, we would not currently be able to under our federal funding, and that's what's very important. I know you just approved, you just approved uh, our, our agreement to move forward with the, um, the state and the feds, so I'm very thankful, and I want to turn it over to Mr. Kevin Glasser to tell you a little bit about his story, and you do have a little blurb in here about him, but he can articulate it a lot better. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Uh, I was a beneficiary, one of the beneficiaries of uh, the work that uh, my friends here, I call them my friends, because uh, they have been doing a, a, a thing that helps, that helped me, but also I, I've seen it help other people, um, people that are just starting in the program. But uh, I found myself homeless. I came uh, from a stable home. I was married for 20 years, raised two kids. Um, uh, my son's going for his master's now, and my daughter's uh, married, uh, but unfortunately I had an abusive relationship with my wife and I, I had to, to separate myself uh, from, for myself. And uh, anyway, I eventually came here to Florida. I got a patent on a product uh, basketball training product uh, and I was here uh, about five years ago and I was able to uh, uh, go to a patent attorney and you know get that ball going. Two years later I was stuck in Pennsylvania again and uh, I had got the patent and so a company, local company here in Newport Ritchie, R&P Reps, was building the prototype. So I, I was trying to find a way to get down here, but I'd lost my job. I was laid off up there. And uh, I was staying with my sister and found that they were involved with drug activity and I had to get out of there quickly. And uh, so I got on a bus and, and came here. 
I was uh, the, I was going to stay with someone, but then the circumstances changed. I was on the street for uh, six, I'm sorry, three weeks, and then I was uh, uh, a kind lady offered me a porch to to sleep at, uh, sleep on, and I could uh, you know use the spigot outside, and I lived there for almost three months. Um, and but gradually I got myself on my feet. I uh, signed up with uh, the program here that we're talking about, uh, along with help through the Homeless Coalition. And uh, my first job was uh, at Harbor Freight one day a week. And uh, <clears throat> I did that for uh, about a month, I guess. And then I got a full-time job as a welder um, through actually Rent's Trailer, was, was mentioned there. Uh, and then eventually I was able to get a job at uh, Paul Aeropower, where I'm still working at. I got an apartment, and, uh, you know, I have a bicycle. I take the bus, and I'm very happy because I, I'm working towards self-sufficiency. I was on food stamps for a short time, but I was able to get off those. And now I feel good about uh, doing what I can to uh, support myself and make advancement. Meanwhile, the prototype is underway, and uh, uh, hopefully I can use my education finally. I, worked, I went to uh, Penn State later in life and got a couple of degrees, and uh, uh, so uh, I'm, it's being used there at uh, Paul Aero Power, but also in trying to get this product uh, done, and hopefully within six months, uh, I'll launch a, a, a new product right here in Pasco County. So that's my goal. And uh, I just wanted to say thank you to the public and to the representatives here that are working hard and working through the program uh, that we're talking about here that uh, has helped me. Mr. Glazer. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Glazer, we're very proud to have you as a citizen in Pasco County, and we hope you do well in the future, and, and uh, we're glad to have you. So, um, thank you. Yes. Um, this is such a great story, and um, this program has, well, let me just say the other program, the federal program, has, is, is so onerous for the businesses. I know that last year Pinellas County, or maybe it was two years ago, sent back $2 million unused um, because the businesses just found it too difficult to, to go through all the paperwork. So right now, WIOA is they're looking for comments and suggestions on how to approve the next authorization. And I think that, um, Joan, we should take this program and um, go up to Washington and talk to those folks about how if, um, if we could um, meld their program with our program and take some of those dollars that go unused with public oversight, maybe they can relax some of those rules. So let's Let's plan a trip and discussion. That's the committee I am vice chair of for the National Association of Counties, which is workforce. And, um, and they're looking for help and suggestions. And this is a national issue. And I, th I think you have uh, a program here that could help change, uh, to help change the opportunities for people all across the country. So thank you very much. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Chairman, real, yes, real quick. And thank you, Kevin. That was a pleasure to meet you beforehand. And uh, it, what a great program. You know, as a commissioner for the last four years, I really never thought we'd have to do so much when it comes to human services. But quite frankly, we're all good humanitarians, and this was a no-brainer to set aside the 350000 to get this done. And I look forward to coming back to the board here soon to ask for more funding. Uh, commissioner Stark, you brought up some great part, great ideas. And this really came down to collaboration with Kathy's team, um, with everyone, meeting with Judge Crane, which I know you didn't mention. Um, I know when we met with Judge Crane a few weeks ago, he's really going to be able to help implement this at his drug court and, and help even more. But again, I, it takes a lot for you to, to be here to, to tell your story. Um, and we know there's, you know, we hear a lot of bad things about the homeless, but there's a lot of great people um, that just want a little hand up. So this is Fantastic, and we appreciate Career Source and everything you do, and uh, excited to have you at Palo Alto Power. So, thank you. Uh, uh, just, uh, we have another local hero who's at True that um, was helped by Career Source and AmSkills, and I was with her boss last night, and um, she's about to get another raise. He said she's just doing fantastic, and we're working on a press conference 
um, with that story. So um, we have a lot to really be proud about with the, you know, it's, it's not always typical that a county is putting money towards workforce development, but I can tell you the dollars that we are putting towards AMP skills and this program is help is really changing so many lives and helping our com our companies expand, and ge and getting these people to be product helping them to be productive citizens and it just reverberates all through the community. So really proud of what we're doing. Yeah. Very Mr. good, Mr. Chairman. Yes, and Kevin, I'd like to say you know your effort that you put in and, and pouring your heart out here today is, is awesome. Um, you're the type of story that we want to talk about. You're the type of person we want to help, especially that can execute and, and get it done. And I, and I say that in a way was you're setting a great example for other people to actually say, you know what, I can go, he did it, I can go do that. So th thank you for your leadership in doing that. You're making the world a better place. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks. Um, and we have another Time certain. Are those folks here? Yes, sir. They're here. R4? Yes, sir. Okay. Come forward. R4. That's Mike. Mr. Chair, Public Infrastructure, at this time I would like to introduce Anne Marie Ryan. I hope like that mic's working. I agree. See if I can. At this time, I would like to uh, introduce Anne Marie Ryan, representing the Summer Tree Water Alliance. She has a special okay. presentation she would like to make. All right, thank you. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, while, while Anne Marie comes up, this okay. is something she requested to do between her and the task force, the stakeholder committee. Uh, they're very, very appreciative of all the all the work the county's done to help them. Well, it was a very terrible water quality system to re really improve it, and she wants to kind of thank all those uh, that did help. Okay. Um, Welcome. Good, good morning, uh, Ron, and, um, and uh, Honorable uh, Council. I just wanted to come before you to thank you for the journey that we've all been on for the past many years to try to improve the water quality in Summer Tree. It's taken a village, it's taken a commission, our state legislators and representatives, many of your fine agencies, including your utility company and their engineers, in order to make this happen. It was just too important to uh, allow the time to go by without recognizing each and, one of you, each and every one of you. It's this collaborative effort of each person in each district looking at the complications that take place countywide. It's the spirit of this board and your resilience to see what's in the future and fix things that weren't your responsibilities from the past. It's taken a long time, 25 years, for us to get to where we are. It was an incredible journey, but because of your, your support and our persistence, here we are. And now you're doing things across the county for other people. We want to encourage you to keep doing what you do, because I think that Pasco is one of the best counties in the state, and I want to thank you for your service. So we have individual um, certificates of appreciation for each of the commissioners, and I'm going to ask, this is my immediate uh, task force. This is Lorraine Mack, Terry Copenhager, Ed Young, Joe Mitchell, and um, Wilbur Tep Copenhager. So we've been the team since the beginning, and so they are going to each present you with a plaque. Okay. I'll move to receive. Yes. Oh. Motion. <laughs> I got a second. Well, you don't want them as part of the record oh, of meeting. Oh, thank, thank you. you so much. Yeah, yeah. This is the first. Awesome. Thank you. How are you, sir? Good to see you. Thank you so much. I think we should take a photo with these. Yeah. That would be really nice. We'd like to take we that back do, to right? the community. Yeah. And I that have my community stand. A whole group has come in. Everybody here in red. Or some of the makes our community unique is that we're only 1,200 people, but when statistics are needed, we normally get between 75 and 83 percent cooperation um, in anything that we do. Wow. And so we have supported um, the board in many ways, but your support has been really remarkable. So thank you. If you would like to get together and take a picture, it would be nice. And I also have um, plaques 
that I need to give to um, the engineers from, um, I have Mike Kabbalah. Can we get the others? Where'd they go? Over to the side. <laughs> While she's doing that, I'd like to um, thank you all, and we're very honored to receive these certificates. It's what we do. We try to do the best we can for all our citizens of Pasco, and we'll work hard to continue doing the same thing. So I know we all agree to that. Does the board want to stand up here and let them come back yeah. here for the picture? Well, before we do that, she's got a few more plaques. And oh, go, ahead. Are you going to the others too? go ahead and um, present those. I would like to present a plaque um, of recognition to Mike Kavala, who is the um, Assistant County Administrator of Public Infrastructure. Um, he and his staff have been absolutely remarkable. We started out as average people with, ac with the access to your staff. We were given knowledge, which gave us power and it gave us the ability to go before the PSC to work with the DEP and other agencies throughout the state. I always feel, even though we have a private utility, that it's important, and we all agree, that you have our back and that you have really tried to rectify the situations and we now have improved the quality of life to your staff. And I just want to read this one part because I think it's really important. I forgot my glasses. Okay. <laughs> Our Summit Tree community residents are grateful to, and recipi to be recipients of the Pasco County Utility Operations and Maintenance Department's ability to integrate, integrate the values of integrity, respect, service excellence, and innovation in their work ethic. Thank you, Mike Kabala, and your staff on behalf of Summit Tree residents for making a difference. So this is for Mike. Rob Marin is the um, Utilities Operation and Maintenance Director. He's been in instrumental in getting our uh, infrastructure put in place and overseeing all the complications we've had even since then. Thank you so much. <laughs> You have a couple more? Yeah, hold on. Commissioner Mariano has a few You have faces, a couple more, right? right? Yes. Okay, we had Mike Pisano, but I think he was expecting to come in in a few minutes. Okay. Uh, just a quick, I'll, I'll do a recap on that later. Okay, Brian Armstrong is our attorney. Um, through um, the, the board and, and through uh, Jack Mariano, we were able to bring in our illustrious attorney. <laughs> expert and you had the foresight to go outside and look for someone who could help us. We tried to get a purchase. We weren't able to do that. But in this journey, um, we were represented for all of these years in our episodes with the PSC and Utilities Inc. We couldn't have done it without Brian and the introduction of all of these experts. Okay, the next one is Brad Laval. Brad Laval is the program manager for utilities, water services, and the, the company director is Gary Dermer. <gasps> Gary Dermer was the CEO and president. I'm sure you're all aware of utilities of, of U.S. Water. They were able to sit down with Utilities Inc., which no one was able to do before, and work as an intermediary between <coughs> the county and Utilities Inc., and brought about a final solution after 25 years. They have expertise. They have tremendous ability. Gary's not here today, but I want to thank you all for working with Gary in the past and, and, and giving him to us so we were able to succeed. Brad is the, is, the, um, is the program manager for U.S. Water. And I asked if I, I, I had asked if I could bring him in today. I just wanted to show the community that it takes a village. And you've allowed that all to happen. And I hope that in time people will see that it's worth the work. And, and, and your teamwork really makes the difference. Okay. Mr. Chairman, if I Commissioner Mariana. You know, I'd just like to say, for those who may not be familiar with how long ago this started, I don't even know how many years ago it was, but Anne-Marie Ryan came to a public hearing 
with Utilities Inc. and the only one here, the only voice heard, and nothing was getting done. And she took it upon herself at that point to go reach out to her, her community, get them involved. Senator Fasano, right from the get-go, uh, I came shortly thereafter, <coughs> but uh, putting a group together, getting the community out there. When, it, when she says they fill out the room, that whole auditorium there is full every single time we're doing a presentation, even something where we're going to talk about what we're going to do next. Um, the will that she had to drive this and bring this great team together, because she had to go to every one of the neighborhoods, get them all together. All the people were informed, I think, you know, brilliantly every step of the way, full disclosure every step of the way, so that everything was in the open. And it got hot and heavy as far as what to do and what not. But Anne-Marie, what you did to bring this whole team together was phenomenal. And, and I appreciate your your gratitude for everybody, because you know, as you say, it took everybody together to make this happen. But I think your professionalism, uh, your dedication it was, was ringing every step of the way. We all saw it, you know, taking trips to Tallahassee, fighting with the PSE, bringing experts in like Brian Armstrong could see that you were going to try to do the right thing. And, you know, we didn't know where this venture was going to go exactly, but we knew we wanted better water quality and, and better pricing for us, for our citizens. And that's what the goal was, however it came out. Uh, U.S. Water. I tell you, we, sit, we sat down with a meeting with DEP, and we've got to listen to uh, Utilities Inc. tell us about why they can't do this, why they can't do that. And we found out with Gary Dermer's expertise in U.S. Water, they drilled down to what the problem was, what they needed to go do, and they schooled them on how to actually even do a chlorine burn, something so basic. Um, everything through that put them in the position where they're at right now. And I want to say our team, Mike, uh, you, Rob, and, and everybody involved, did a phenomenal job helping them coordinate to make all this happen. So much so that when we did reach out to the state, they saw what we were doing, and guess what? We got a good grant to go make a situation that otherwise would have been potentially unaffordable or let Utilities Inc. make a lot of money off these people even more so. That didn't happen because we did the right thing. And working as a board, I want to, I want to thank this board, letting us get that stakeholder committee, putting the focus on for our staff to help these people, I'm telling you. This board made a phenomenal difference to the quality of life of all these people here. So I thank you all so much. Just one more note on, on the engineering. You know, we waited for such a long time and we saved two point three million dollars through state grants, work that we did to reduce our impact fees, and then um, the county's intercession as well. But when we got that water and we got good water brought to our, our community, we were so excited. The utilities inc didn't know how to manage it and so you allowed your your expertise we're we're uh, utilities inc is still the customer and we're customers of utilities inc your your staff your your um leaders allowed us to to have oversight it took almost 18 months to teach them how to give us safe water we had bacteria growing in our water because they couldn't keep residuals where it needed to be we were treated like a second hand you know with third world country your persistence and everyone's work really makes a difference. And I think people need to hear that it, you know, we learned a lot, but you gave us the ability to learn. Right. And then you, and then you empowered us. Thank you. you. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Mano, if you would please come forward. Mm -hmm. hey, could I just talk to Senator Fasano okay. for a second as well? Okay. And Senator, <laughs> Senator. No, I want to thank you because you were the first one to jump into this thank as a senator, jumping right in and helping Anne Marie get all this rolling. You got great help later on with other, the other, you know, Speaker Corcoran, uh, Senator Simpson, and company every step of the way. But you were the one the forefront driving this through. So thank you very much. Yep. gave us wings, he empowered our community, he gave us hope, and he came to us to keep us going when we didn't think we could. God bless you. Okay. All right, photo? Anne-Marie, let's take a photo. If everybody will move in front here. Mr. Oh, Mr. Chair, Ball, would like to if say I may address the board, just 30 seconds. Uh, okay. we're, we're appreciative of, of these, these awards, Anne-Marie, especially on behalf of the Public Infrastructure Branch. And uh, I'm sure Rob and, and Jim would, would agree that we're, we're humbled by this, uh, but we also accept it too. And, and I know you're grateful for the team that, that is behind it. There's a lot of engineers, operators, and, and contractors that helped to make this happen. So we accept this on their behalf as well. So thank you.
them right up here. And what Everybody? about the other red shirts? I think, I think, yeah, I think the whole oh, community yeah. should come up. Yep. Everybody come up. Everybody. All your community. <laughs> put the board in front and the other side. Yeah. Your board in front. Yeah, put your board right in the front. Y'all get in the front? You, you, you guys get in the front and let the other ones come behind you. We're going to have to We're going to have to We're going to Oh, no, you can change it. Paul would be right there. Oh, they're open. We should hold our plaque. Guys, hold your plaque. Hold your plaque. Let's back up as close as we can. Yeah. Don't drop that plaque. I'm trying to bring you to the chair. <laughs> Thank you. Why is everyone on that side and not on this side? Bring it in. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Where's the ladder when you need it? Got a ladder. Okay. Thank you. That's awesome. Awesome. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank 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 you. Now we're ready for um, R2. I think everyone's here. Are you done? Um, David Engel, Office of Economic Growth. I'm here today to present a job creation incentive uh, agreement to the board. And I'd like to just say that if you had to pick a case study for Pasco County's economic growth and job creation, Farmer Works would be the top of the list. FarmerWorks opened their doors in 2005 and in 14 years has grown to be a, a robust major regional manufacturing company in our, in our county. FarmerWorks designs and manufactures, refurbishes pharmaceutical packaging equipment. They have a, a multi-building facility in West Pasco Industrial Park consisting of uh, precision engineers, draftspeople, machine work, machine shop and also a manufacturing floor. Oops. Far FarmerWorks also participates very actively in the AmSkills program. Currently there are three apprentices working at FarmerWorks and they have sent a young individual to college for two years paying the tuition and the young individual will return as a full-time employee to FarmerWorks. FarmerWorks is going to be expanding one of their buildings. It's the manufacturing building by 11,000 square feet. It'll comprise of $900,000 worth of improvements. That addition will create 19 full-time jobs, additional jobs in Pasco County. The average annual wage is $55,700, which is 150% of the annual average wage in Pasco. The economic benefits are expansive. Uh, the new addition will allow FarmerWorks to increase their annual sales by $35 million. Direct and indirect induced employment will be 27 new jobs, and the average annual wage will exceed $1.1 million. What that means in its totality is, is that the county gross domestic product will grow by $3.6 million annually. The proposal is to award FarmerWorks $76,000, and it provides a 1 to 47 return on investment. I'd like to int introduce the uh, management team of FarmerWorks to the board and also our professional, the professional staff that has been involved with these uh, retention programs from the PASCO EDC. Would you please come up, please? 
Good morning. This is Peter Puczynski. He's the uh, president of the company. Frank Levitar, he's the CFO. And over here in the backdrop is Jawana Williams, who's the VP for the PASCO EDC, and our new economic development manager at the PASCO EDC, Jenny Sonora. We're requesting um, that the board authorize uh, the chairman to sign the originals for the economic incentive agreement for this proposal. And Peter, if you want to say a couple of words. Good morning. Good morning. This is a great county. <laughs> Just want to say. So the county's been extremely supportive since we, since we moved here in 2004. And uh, it's exciting. Uh, we've gotten involved with the county, and it's just it's just a, a great place to, to expand. And the support that we're getting is just phenomenal. I just have to say that. So outside of anything else I want to say today, but it's uh, fantastic. So really appreciate it. We are growing, and that's um, it's a challenge in itself. Um, so we appreciate uh, all the support we have for manufacturing. I know Commissioner Stark is just, I just want to hug her because she's just uh, <laughs> she's so supportive. She's so passionate and gets so frustrated with manufacturers as well to get you know, on it. But uh, we're seeing tremendous yeah, success. Afraid. You know, the, the apprenticeship program is just phenomenal, the AMP skills program. And it's just, we're seeing just this hope for these young people and it's meeting our needs. And they're just, um, it's just, and we want to use this as an example. You know, not just selfishly grow our own talent, but we really want to show other manufacturers that this is the way, this is the way to make it happen. So we are growing. Uh, we appreciate all the incentives and, you know, the PEDC involvement and help with it. So it's, uh, um, yeah, thank you very much. So how many AMP skills apprentices do you have <coughs> now? Or do we currently have three. Uh, we'd like to take on more, and it's just, um, it's, um, yeah. And one of them you've sent to college. So he was a graduate of Sun Lake High School, one of our first um, students. And now um, he is at where, UCF? He's, yeah, this student had no direction whatsoever. His parents took a chance, got into AMP skills right when it started. And uh, he was kind of our guinea pig. And we rotated him around at different areas of the company. And he got to be involved with um, just all different facets between machining, uh, assembly, uh, receiving. Um, got into uh, inspection. Eventually, he wanted to try, he wanted to try mechanical engineering. We got him into that in that department, and um, um, so he decided he wanted to become a mechanical engineer. And he's such a phenomenal student, such a phenomenal young man. So we're saying, okay, we had to come up with a, a education reimbursement program that worked for everybody. And now we're paying his tuition for the next two years at UCF with the hope that he comes back. There's UCF. no guarantee. Have you noticed the trend lately? <laughs> <laughs> the successful people going to UCF? <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> but it, it, it just works. No comment just... on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Mr. Peter, work? you you give back to this community and um, to our students, and you always open up your company for tours, and you speak, um, you go to Tallahassee, and wherever it is, you, you speak about the need for um, help with workforce training, and, and you, you walk the walk and talk the talk, and I appreciate everything you and your company do as well. I think we're, what we're doing here isn't just for the county. Right. I really think what we're doing here is we're creating a model for the country. Yeah. 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 We, thank you so much. We thank you for being a part of our campaign. I would move to Mr. Chairman, if I could. Motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Peter, I'd just like to pass. Peter, I'd just like to say, for years and years, you've just been a phenomenal participant in the community. You've got a great company, great product, and uh, thank you for all you're doing for our youth and, again, being the model for the nation. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you. Now we'll go to R3. Morning board, Stacy Ziegler, purchasing director. If I could, I would briefly like to uh, go through the timeline timeline of events that got us here today, and then allow the affected vendors an opportunity to address the board, uh, followed by Q and A. Um, December eighteenth, 
2018 Purchasing Department at the request of Pasco County Public Transportation Department solicited proposals for interior and exterior transit advertising. To date, only exterior wrap advertising was occurring. Um, the objective of the Public Procurement and Purchasing Department is to promote an open and fair competition and allow as much participation as possible. Uh, we received two responses and both were deemed compliant with the requirements of the RFP. January 28th, 2019, the Evaluation Committee scored the written proposals based on the criteria identified in the RFP. Local preference per our ordinance is applied at this stage of the process. Um, the Evaluation Committee uh, determined that Blackjack Media Group uh, received 377 points. Uh, that included their 10 for local preference. And Mad Graphics came in second with 369 points. And it included five extra points for regional preference. Um, the Evaluation Committee uh, determined because uh, the, the point system was so close and they had additional um, outstanding questions that they wanted to go to oral presentations. Uh, February 7th, 2019, uh, for oral presentations, each proposer was provided the same set of seven questions raised by the Evaluation Committee. Uh, presentations are ranked at this level. They're not scored at this stage, as is the requirement by the RFP process. Um, there are no further points at this stage for local preference as applied um, at the stage per the purchasing ordinance. Um, after oral presentation, committee members cumulatively rank the firms based on the criteria in the RFP in the following ranking order. Mad Graphics uh, was ranked number one with five points, and Blackjack was ranked uh, second with 10 points. On February 15th, Blackjack uh, submitted a formal protest of the notice of intent to award to Mad Graphics. Uh, they challenged the evaluation committee's decision, and the process followed. Based on our ordinance, uh, that protest went first to the county administrator's office. Um, the county administrator on February 25th, 2019, responded. Their response was to deny in part and uphold in part Blackjack's protest. Um, the county administrator determined that due to a technicality that had resulted in the ranking of the firms cumulatively rather than on the individual tabs at orals, the committee should uh, reconvene to rehear oral presentations and rank according to each individual tab and RFP criteria. Um, additionally, Blackjack's video was unable to be shown during the first oral presentations. Uh, there was an incompatibility with our infrastructure. Uh, so in the interest of fairness, they were allowed to play their video at the second oral presentations. On March 1st, 2019, the committee heard best and final offer presentations from both Blackjack and Mad Graphics, and they independently ranked the two firms based on the individual tab criteria stated in the RFP in the following ranking order. Again, Mad Graphics uh, was ranked highest at, with 36 cumulative points, and Blackjack was ranked second with 54 cumulative points. On March 11th, Blackjack submitted a timely protest uh, to the county attorney's response to their original protest, uh, which is why the next process is that it goes to the board for review. That would be county administrators. I'm sorry, I say that all the time. <laughs> I apologize, <laughs> Jeff. <laughs> county administrator. Uh, this is just a list of the written evaluation criteria and the points that are associated with it, so you know the tabs that were ranked in the written evaluation. And then these are the same tabs that are used um, that we do the ranking of one or two when you get to the oral presentations. Black Jack. Go back, please. Sure. Sorry. That's okay. I know how to go back. Thank you. Give me one second. Do you want the first one or the second one? That one's fine. Okay. Okay, thank you. Do, do we have that sheet printed in here? That one. Uh, Blackjack's protest makes two arguments. Uh, the first is that, is that the RFP is specific to transit advertising and not just vehicle wrapping. Um, purchasing's response is that the universal definition of transit is the carrying of people, goods, or materials from one place to another. Ms. Chairman? Yes, sir. Let me stop right there, because frankly, 
when I look at this RFP that went out, it did ask for uh, qualifications. And the definition just given, okay, and the sheet I was given was, I talked with staff, um, about the carrying of people, goods, or materials from one place to another. That was one definition. Another definition in the same context is the North American version, the same sheet that was given. It said the conveyance of passengers on public transportation. I looked up another definition that came up under Google, and it said a system of large-scale public transportation in a given metropolitan area typically comprising buses, subways, and elevated trains. <coughs> now, what I want to know is how did it ever get passed? Obviously, Blackjack has done work for the county and the transit system. They also have the Polk County system that they're working on as well. So they're, they're qualified under that. But I want to know how in this RFP did you ever get past that point where Mad Graphics even qualifies to be one of the two? Mad Graphics has over 20 years experience in marketing, advertising, bus wrapping, trans uh, transit vehicles. We didn't specify that it was quote unquote mass transit. Um, we did look at, when we formulated the RFP for this, we looked at several other RFPs from like entities, um, such as Hillsborough County, Poe County, of which they have the Citrus Connection, uh, as well as a few others. I know that when uh, Kurt Scheibel over at PCPT was looking at the specs, he looked at other counties as well in order to get the specs together. Uh, PCPT conveyed to our department that their ultimate goal was to increase county revenue and to obtain national advertising opportunities as well as not limiting themselves to just local advertising. Again, our process as purchasing is just to ensure open and fair competition and to allow as many people to, to be able to solicit if they fall. <coughs> it, it, it's up to the evaluation committee thereafter to determine who is the best for Pasco County. Okay, so as much as we want to get as much competition as we can, it's good for pricing, et cetera. But qualifications are what the number one thing we're supposed to be looking at to make this next step. And your expanding of the definition, I don't think is the right way to go with it, and I disagree with you 100%. When you look at 9.3 in the references, okay, it says, please provide three references of transit clients or organizations similar to a transit organization for which your firm has provided work or similar size and scope. So work for similar size and scope information provided each. And it says at the bottom, failure pr to provide complete and accurate client information as specified herein may result in disqualification of your proposal. They gave us Westfall roofing, roofing. It didn't include a time period. It showed wrapping of trucks, like a, a pickup truck. Uh, it had stay cool air conditioning, didn't have a time period in there. It showed a van again, not transit, and then it had famous tape. It had a time, didn't have a time period. It showed a high cube delivery truck, again, no transit. All one-time installs per vehicle to vehicle for service and retail companies on their own vehicles, not a transit system. So I don't see why you even allowed them to come in, and you want to explain that part of it. Um, sure. I don't need to hear that. And, and and our, how we looked at is references or transit clients or organizations similar to a transit organization for which they could provide similar size and scope. They did provide three commercial customers whose vehicles they fabricated the ads for and wrapped. Um, any of those a transit were, organization? Well, again, while any of those my, a transit while, organization? Would any of those I'll, qualify? I'd like to answer the question. I want to answer, I want you to answer my direct question. Sure. Would any of those qualify to be a transit organization? Again, I don't feel like that's the determination that purchasing is supposed to make in that regards. We felt that while Mad Graphics does not hold a county transit contract, they have demonstrated that they do have marketing, advertising experience in transit, which is the bus wrapping that they do. So it's up to the, once, once we do that, again, it's up to an evaluation committee of, of two um, associate county administrators and three directors to decide if Mad Graphics truly has what they need and what's best for Pasco County. Again, we're the facilitators of the process. We're not the determiners of the process. And we work hand in hand with the county attorney's office every step of the way. The county attorney's office 
advises us. They review the RFPs. They review when the determinations <coughs> come back. They sit in on all written and oral evaluations. So we work hand in hand with the department and with the county attorney's office. We don't work in a silo. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Foyles. Yeah. Just since we're on the subject, I was going to wait until after I heard everything, but let me just make sure I'm clear here. And, and I got an opportunity to sit through the first meeting. Obviously, I didn't say anything. I just sat in the back of the room because I wanted to see the process and actually listen to it. And uh, so that is what it is. But so you're, you're telling me, and I'm just looking from the beginning, seeking proposals from qualified advertising firms with experience in marketing, service, and maintenance of transit advertising. You're telling me that Mad Graphics has done all that. They've gone out and sold companies to wrap on buses. Again, that's that's for Mad Graphics to now come in and show the evaluation committee but again, of, which, of but which they did in the evaluation committee on both oral presentations, the evaluation committee on the first one unanimously, and the second one, again, they chose Mad Graphics to say that they have proven this. Um, while they they demonstrated at the orals. They have the requisite marketing experience. They had worked with like agencies. They referenced NASA, Hillsborough County School Board, Hillsborough Sheriff's Department. They also said they've worked with Veterans Affairs. Um, they conveyed as well that they had wrapped paratransit vehicles as well as school buses. So they they have said that they have that like. Well, similar. it's one thing to wrap it because you've got somebody brain something, but it's one another thing to get out and advertise and and uh, work with companies to wrap. So it's just that's, that's what I'm saying. They don't have that experience. And um, they're here today to discuss yeah. that. I mean, okay. those are the questions, you guys, the hard questions. If you can definitely ask the company. Okay. okay. Board options. The board has three options. They one can approve staff recommendation to award the Mad, Mad Graphics, the top ranked firm after both oral presentations. Uh, two, you can reject staff's recommendation and you can award to Blackjack, the second ranked firm. Or three, you can reject all bids and ask purchasing to resolicit the bid. Uh, both Blackjack and Mad Graphics would like an opportunity to address the board on this issue. They've been advised they have 10 minutes to address the board, followed by Q&A from the board. Uh, this was our past practice with any protests we've had before. Uh, one other note on Mad Graphics presentation information, and I do have copies of their presentation if you'd like it. Um, they included one new document, which is a cert certificate of their 3M warranty. Um, everything else that's in there was presented at um, oral presentations. Um, however, this should not matter for the purposes of the protest as the evaluation committee made their decision prior to this information. At this time, we'll start with uh, Blackjack. Hey. Welcome. Steve Booth, 7510 Ridge Road in Port Ritchie, representing um, the protester in this, um, in this meeting. First of all, I apologize for my cell phone going off. I did put it on silent. <laughs> it started going, and I could not shut it off. I touched everything. I could have had my grandson do it. Anyway, um, I think a number of things that we have been concerned about and is the crux <clears throat> of our protest has been uh, demonstrated by uh, Commissioner Mariano. The RFP specifically states seeking proposals from qualified advertising firms with experience in marketing, service, and maintenance of transit advertising. And the definition that Commissioner Mariano referenced, uh, I too Googled it, and that's what it specifically talks about is uh, bus systems, et cetera, not just wrapping a vehicle. There's a big distinction between just wrapping a customer's vehicles and going out and soliciting in an advertising format to customers to wrap Pasco County's buses. Nothing was presented by Mad Graphics that they ever have wrapped a transit vehicle as we are describing it. Um, I disagree what Ms. Ziegler has stated that there were wrapped buses in the oral presentation, but we're not aware of any buses that they have wrapped, or any other transit vehicles, if you will. She also made the statement that they have the advertising expertise because of what they've been doing. It's interesting to note that in their presentation, 
they said that they would did not have the expertise on the matter, but they would, at his advertising, <coughs> that they would go out and find somebody that could be, provide them with the expertise, and they would learn from it. And this is what I think triggered one of the reviewers' statement that was that the blackjack had demonstrated over the course of the seven-year contract that they had with the county that they had the expertise to do this. And the reviewer said, they have, um, Mad Graphics has not proved that they could. It would be a leap of faith on whether Mad Graphics could do the same. So what's being represented to you at this point by the reviewing body is that they admit <coughs> it's a leap of faith because we don't even know who their advertising professionals might be. But they win the award. Um, what we presented, and it's in your packet, is three different advertisers on buses that generated over $435,000 or $45,000 in advertising. And there is nothing that's in Mad Graphics presentation that shows you that they have ever generated anything, any sums of money, on transit advertising. Um, I might add that in that period of time that, Mad, that uh, um, Blackjack has had the county contract, they've generated well over a million dollars to the county on this matter, on this uh, type of program. And uh, we think that the fact that we have clearly demonstrated what our capabilities are based upon past experience and just wrapping a vehicle, like Mad Graphics points out, is uh, something that is insufficient. Um, the qualifications specifically say <laughs> posers should provide a profile of the firm, including a proven track record of success, not a leap of faith, management and maintenance of advertising space, whether it can provide an account representative which demonstrated experience in transit advertising, again, a leap of faith because they're going to go out and hire somebody with expertise, but we have no idea who that is, and if it is a responsive and responsible supplier in good standing, we don't question any of that. There is no doubt in my mind that Mad Graphics does a nice job wrapping vehicles for a fleet of trucks, even like uh, the uh, one that they showed in their proposal. They have absolutely no experience about transit advertising, and this was a bid for transit advertising. Um, I think I have a few minutes left, and I would like to reserve that for rebuttal after Mad Graphics speaks, if that's acceptable to uh, the board. Okay with me, Mr. Chairman? Chairman? Okay. Yes. You okay with that? Yep. Okay. Thank you. I think I have about four and a half minutes left. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> what is the what is the official block say? Four <laughs> thirty. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Please state your name. So. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Heather Ramirez. Pull that mic. Can you pull the mic down? Thank you. Yeah. You can just use the tip of it. Okay. There you, you go. Now. Better. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, um, um, Mr. Chairman. My name is Heather Ramirez, and this is Raj Ramirez, and we're the owners of Mad Graphics. And we'd like to thank you for the opportunity to respond to the prior vendor's protest, which is based on their opinion that we at Mad Graphics do not have experience to take over the advertising project. Um, we'd like to 
counter that opinion yeah. and tell you a little bit more about ourselves. Yeah. Still can't hear Something that's not, it's not coming through very well. Okay. Can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. Okay, so why Mad Graphics? Mad Graphics is a digital media company where we create advertising campaigns for vehicles. This is our niche. The media we specialize in is mobile billboards. We've been in business for 20 years, and our average client relationships are more than 10 years running, including a few who've been with us since the beginning. The prior vendor is arguing that Mad Graphics doesn't hold a public transit advertising contract. Therefore, we don't have the right kind of experience. We don't yet hold the same contract. However, we do have comparable experience that makes us the perfect fit as the new partner with PCPT as required by the RFP. I'd also like to point out that the prior vendor was awarded their first contract with PCPT without ever having held a similar contract themselves. And they only had been in business for a handful of years. Again, we've been in business, this business, for 20 years. So, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about where we're located, um, just a little bit more about <coughs> us. So we're located just next door in Northern Hillsborough County, and I might add that Raj and I actually do live and pay our taxes here in, Hills in um, Pasco County. We're longtime Land Lakes residents, so we do actually live here. Um, so we are obviously invested personally as well as professionally in the growth of Pasco County. So. Again, um, the prior vendor falsely stated that we plan to hire a marketing company to do our sales, and this is patently false. Um, we addressed that in our last oral presentation. We did not state that. Um, Raj is a seasoned sales professional, and again, I might point out that we have been in business for 20 years. So if we could not do sales and marketing, we would not still be in business. <coughs> um, so we have submitted our marketing plan that shows that for the bus advertising, and it's included in your packet, <coughs> I think there was some information that we had handed out to you. And um, it, it does show some of the work that we've started to execute since being chosen as the next partner um, by the evaluating committee. And so as we told them, and we'll tell you, we look forward to bringing a new, fresh, creative plan to the county, and we'll work hard to sell out all of the available advertising space both inside and out. And um, we won't be satisfied with anything else. And additionally, I'd like to point out that our minimum guaranteed revenue is still higher at the end of the day than the prior vendor's <clears throat> revenue proposal was. Um, so that was important, we felt, to also mention. And um, additionally, we do have a strategy in place, as I mentioned. And so we have started working on some of that. So we do have some advertising um, experience. And um, so some of our advertising experience that we feel is comparable is we do the marketing for um, famous Tate appliance and bedding centers. So their, um, their delivery fleet is the best um, example that we have of something that we do that is similar to the transit system. And Famous Tate also has a program that allows their suppliers to advertise on their delivery trucks. So we work with their largest suppliers to create the eye-catching and effective advertising that you do see, because that was created in-house at our firm. Um, additionally, we did submit examples, and um, they were presented to you. We have held um, several federal, state, and county contracts in the past. We've worked with Kennedy Space Center on the wall project. We've worked with the James A. Veteran, um, Haley Veterans Hospital. We've worked with Hillsborough County and we have wrapped their buses. So the Meals on Wheels program, that was done in our shop. Um, we also worked with the Republican National Convention. We wrapped the vehicles for um, shuttling people around town to the events when that was here. And we did do 12 of those. Um, so we do have that experience. Some of our other clients that have been with us, uh, we do work with the Florida Aquarium. And here in Pasco County, um, notably, we've worked with uh, the shops of Wiregrass, so Greg Lenners and his team. And we've worked with them since the beginning, and we have done advertising to help them um, since um, construction mm -hmm. um, to advertise on the open spaces for them when they were um, start, first starting to get new tenants in. So, and we did use some clients that do have large fleets, uh, and services is one of our big clients that we, that use, that had um, used us from the beginning. We created their advertising campaign from the ground up, and it included brand, um, 
it also included logo, colors, initial campaign through the growth and development. So that campaign has changed throughout the years. Um, we, I'm sorry, I changed some, I added some things today, so. Again, we do have a strategy for growth in national and international and social media marketing plans. And some of those um, plans that we have in place include branding our partnership with PCPT for, for selling the wrap advertising, including website upsate, updates and social media presence. We're gonna be assessing the current advertising system in place for PCPT and make adjustments as needed. Market research to identify the, identify the underserved marketing opportunities based on demographic, geographic, and psychographics of the PCPT market segment. We're gonna be evaluating both the ridership target markets for internal sales, for exam example, and the non-rider target markets that share the roads with Pasco County Transit, um, paratransit, and buses. Um, we will be identifying international, national, state, and local businesses who could bis benefit from advertising with Pasco County. And we will be implementing strategies for building awareness for our new partnership with, um, to potentially include wrap, vehicle wraps, news releases, website posts, email, social media, online advertising, and possibly video. We will work with the existing PCPT advertiser to advertisers to handle the transition with the new partner, and we will assess their current experience and see what like they would like to see differently. Um, our goal is to sell new creative advertising space not previously utilized. We had um, mentioned maybe selling the ceiling on the inside of the buses as well, and again, that would be upon approval by PCPT. Um, and and last, we are going to strive to sell all available space. Not 30%, not 50%. Our goal is 100%. And uh, finally, we plan to provide Pasco County the most viable, cost-effective, out-of-home advertising partnership to maximize revenue and serve the Pasco County community. And we've seen some of your wrapped buses, and we'd like the opportunity to partner with you and show you what we can do. We know you won't be disappointed by choosing Mad Graphics, and we would like to invite you to imagine the possibilities. More questions? Oh, um, so you wrapped the buses for the Republican National Convention? Yes. We sure did. So. There was a, a whole fleet of a paratransit. 12 paratransit uh -huh. that they used to transport. I remember them. Yeah. The yeah. buses, they've been wrapped nice, but boy, they, that whole system was a mess. But I, so I don't, <laughs> I don't, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't understand. I consider you um, qualified to to uh, apply for the bid, so. Okay. Any other questions? Do you wrap? Yeah. Yep, that's, and that's it. I just consider them that's it. qualified, yeah. No one else had any questions? Mr. So. <laughs> Mariana? One of the requirements is having a transit sales experience, and you've sold the fleets, et cetera. Have you ever sold as a transit sales person? Well, we haven't because there aren't that many um, contracts like this one out there. So obviously there aren't a lot of um, companies that have this experience. And so, no, we have never held one of these contracts. But again, I want to point out that your prior vendor also hadn't held one when they were first awarded the contract, and <clears throat> that didn't hold them back. Well, it actually did because the first bid, they didn't get it because they weren't qualified. The other firm got hired, but when they couldn't come through, then we negotiated with them and put the deal together. Sure. And if I could be clear, I mean, I'm, uh, you know, we appreciate you all being here. And, and what it comes down to me, and this is something that, you know, we need to make some changes in our process. And it comes down to what the expectations are. You don't meet the expectations, in my opinion, which are very clear with, and if, if staff thought that that was that important, we shouldn't have put that in there, um, that you didn't need that experience. But you're telling us today that you don't have the experience. And I just question, I know it's a big to get those companies. I, I understand, but that's not what the, I'm just going off of legally what is written in the proposal and what specifically, which is very specific on, you know, transit advertising programs. So I just, you know, I want to thank you for your time. I, that's the way I feel. But, but, so I feel that you, you know, anyhow. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wait until everything's over. Okay. I think we still have. You still have rebuttal. Both and staff. Okay. Uh, speaking to, so. The, bit, the best solution is 
let's just do our own advertising and advertise the assets we have in the county and not other people's products. That, that would be my solution. All right, Mr. Booth. A couple of things. Um, it's interesting to me that they're talking about bus reps that they have done and in the references, as Commissioner Mariano pointed out, that was never included. I think we have to be awful careful of statements of things that they've done now that they're demonstrating that they did not necessarily, um, or they didn't include that in those initial presentations because that's all we really should have uh, to go on, and, my, and that's my position anyway. Um, the Meals on Wheels, the, the Republican National Convention, uh, or at least that one, the Republican National Convention is a one-time deal. It's not uh, pay for advertising over a, you know, a year's period or something like that. It's for a short period of time when that event is going on. Um, and we don't know how that came about. There's nothing ever uh, explained. She also stated that there uh, isn't the opportunity to have uh, prior work in this field. Uh, Polk County just let the same type of uh, contract out, and my client was successful in obtaining that. Um, the other thing that I think is important, and we've addressed the difference in what the, what the experience level is, I don't think they've shown any experience in transit advertising, which, as Commissioner Wells said, is what the RFP says. said. If it was to be just wraps, like their evidence that they, for their references, showed that it was just wraps, then that could have been open to a lot of other vendors around here. There's other wrapping companies here in the county, and they certainly could have applied had it been confined to uh, just the wraps. The other thing that uh, I think is important, she said that she lives here in Pasco. Um, the owners of, of um, Blackjack Media are invested in this community. They're very active in the community. They're in service clubs. Uh, they print all sorts of other types of uh, materials for, uh, for volunteer organizations, for 501c3s. Uh, they're both very active in the community. And as I said, based upon what they've done before, they generated well over a million dollars to the county in that period of time that they had the contract. The other thing um, that I would point out is that there is that local preference then. And uh, Mr. Biles correctly pointed out in his uh, reply to my client that you know, this, the particular ordinance does not address local preference in this instance, and I don't disagree with that at all. However, I think it's a concept. You know, if it's good in several situations, is that not also at least a factor? And I was a little bit surprised to learn that when uh, Ms. Ziegler made her presentation, that she said at that first level that local preference comes into play. So I think that should be a factor in this also. And the fact that they won the first time around, my client did, they won the first time around and then something happened at these oral presentations, but yet the reviewing committee in their final position stated it's a leap of faith to go with Mad Graphics. And I think for those reasons, um, they're they should not be the winner of this bid. Thank you. Thank you. Is there, uh, I'm sorry. Is, 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 staff going to, is, no, is staff following up with anything else? Or? Let's get through this. And we'll, I think all we... We had discussion. Do you have any questions for us? Well, I, I do. Okay. Okay. Then we can, so, yeah, then we can, be, we can yeah. answer questions. So let me just start off by saying, um, you know, I did have a conference call with um, staff yesterday morning. I was out of town last week, so um, I was pushed a little bit behind. Um, and then after we had the call, they did deliver um, a uh, thumb drive of the um, actual um, 
presentations to me, and I reviewed last night into this morning. Had to review it. It was long, <laughs> uh, but I did re review again. Um, and I'm gonna. I have a few other statements I want to make, but I want to ask a couple of questions first. Um, do we limit? And this may not be a, something you can answer, but um, do we limit the type of advertising or advertisers that can be done on our buses? Yes, we do. Okay, so can you explain how that may be limited? There's a board adopted policy on the limitations on advertising um, that has historically, since we started wrapping, has been in place. That's correct. Since I don't think that's ever, discussion has ever come up since I've been on the board that, about types <laughs> of advertisers or where it could be advertised on a bus. Uh, we discussed it. it was included in the RFP, the policy. Yes, it was. Okay. Yeah. 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 But I'm saying as a board, so go ahead, please. Yeah, the policy basically um, limits things that are inappropriate and the standard, right. things like that. But Understandable. The, the, biggest, the biggest one that's on there is that no lo legal uh, lawyers uh, can advertise on our vehicles. No political. Pol and political, political, political aspects, too. Okay. Well, I can no understand sexually oriented political. businesses. No, yeah, I mean, th there's a, there's a whole the list of things order. that... That can't be. That can't be. And that was included. What in else? The is there anything else that's okay? So you mentioned the. I don't have the ordinance right in front of me. businesses. Sorry. And then <laughs> uh, you mentioned the attorneys. You said? Attorneys, yes. Attorneys cannot advertise on Why is that? Because um, let's that say was a recommendation from your county attorney. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> At the time. The <laughs> one. Florida Bar is the approval authority of any advertising. We didn't feel it was in the board's best interest to have to have those things those things proved. And frankly, the 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 concept of personal injury lawyers advertising on buses and auto accidents has in other jurisdictions <laughs> been discussed and that was that was part of the recommendation. Other places. By the way, I'm Kurt Scheibel, the director of PCPT. Okay. So to continue, um, I know we're gonna run over, but that's the way it goes sometimes. Um, have we been limited the space on the bus? So I heard about advertising internally. Yes, you can have, uh, the, the, there is no limit in the RFP that I put in there that says that you are limited on what you're doing to the full bus and inside. The only thing I- This RFP or the past RFPs too? I'm sorry? Past RFPs? Is I did not read the past RFP. I wanted to give the uh, proposals of proposers the maximum opportunity to generate revenue. Okay. Okay. I believe the last one also included internal. Okay. okay. Oh, just so you understand, sir, I do reserve one or two spaces for like public service announcements, things like that. But that is, uh, we'd like put our, uh, when we're going to be closed, the holidays are going to be closed, things like that. But that should not impact the uh, amount of advertisement inside. Okay, so you reserve some space on the bus. Internally. Internally, okay. Yeah. 11 okay. by 17. I'm Internally, getting, okay. Internally so only. if you need to post your own sign up is what you're saying. Yes, sir. And okay. And, and we just do, to. and we do that internally as a county. We put up, we produce the sign ourselves and post it ourselves. Shots, things like that. I work with the health department that gives some things. I've worked with animals to put like get rabies shots, things like that. Okay. Or advertise. Uh, but again, that's produced by the county staff. The Correct. signage is produced internally and posted internally. It's not done by the vendor. No. Okay. Uh, we do it internally, yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So we're not paying them to manufacture the signs for... No, it's okay. 11 by 17 and laminate them, stick them on. Okay. So I have some more things I want to discuss, but I don't have any, I didn't, I don't want to, him to have to come back up. So if anybody else, Mr. Chairman, has any questions for Kurt before I continue. Kurt. Okay. All right. So now I'll continue. Okay. So, and listen, I, I know this is a... Is that for or somebody else? No, this is for me. No, but for her... Or? No, this is for me to discuss now. Okay. All right. <laughs> um, I know it's a difficult process. I, I know it's not an enjoyable process, even going through the RFP process. I've been through it myself on numerous occasions outside of this county. I previous my previous lives, I've I've owned businesses and I had contracts with counties and I had contracts with the state. I've gone through the RFP process numerous times, RFQ process new, numerous times. Um, so I know it's a very um, how can I put it strenuous um, process. So I commend anybody that applies 
um, for a, or actually submits a bid in any manner um, with a government entity, because it's not the easiest thing to do. Um, so I reviewed, like I said yesterday evening and um, this morning, the audio. Um, and a couple things stood out to me after the review and after having the discussion with staff. Um, there's no doubt in my mind that both companies can wrap. I think if this, personally, I think if this, um, this was, I can't remember, this is RFP, right? It was RFP? Yes, it's yeah. RFP. If, if this RFP went out and it was only to wrap vehicles, there probably would have been 50 submissions. Because if you can, you can imagine how many companies there are in the Quad County area that wrap vehicles, there's a, there's a lot. And I'm sure a lot would have come out. I look at this as more of an advertising situation myself. Um, having hiring a number of salespeople in the past and being in sales at one time in my life myself, um, it's not the easiest thing to do. And um, it, it takes a, a lot of time, a lot of training. And um, when I hired people, typically I would um, hire people that knew my business that were already in the business. Um, I would do my best to recruit from other companies, good salespeople, because they were hard to find. Um, if I trained people, you know, I trained them myself and I trained them my way to do it the right way, but it took time. It didn't happen overnight. That's a huge investment to invest in an employee and, and go through that um, training process. Um, so I, you know, with that, I, I really think this is more of an advertising situation versus a rap situation. Um, and I, I don't, and I apologize, I don't know who s said this because I recognized Kathy's voice, I recognized um, um, Adam's voice, I recognized um, who else was on the committee? Um, Adam, Eric. Eric, I recognized Eric's, Eric's, Kevin Eric's Kevin there were two voices I didn't recognize in them. There would have been Kevin Mark and Mark, so I'm not sure who said it, but somebody stated, and I reviewed this again this morning so I could write it down. And, I'll spin it from a marketing standpoint and potential for advertisement. Blackjack has proven they can bring advertisers in and keep the buses wrapped. They've proven they can sell, and I'm not, and I'll, and I'll leave it at that because um, I'm not going to talk, you know, negative about any company. Um, but even one of the committee members stated that the current company has sold and they've keep, kept the buses wrapped, and they've proven that they can sell. And you know. The only reason we're wrapping buses is to sell advertising. That's the only reason we're wrapping buses, is to sell advertising. That's it. You know, it's a revenue. So when I think about you know, being a good steward for you know, our citizens, I have to make a decision that's going to have the best, the best ROI. And honestly, I think that the firm that's already done it and experienced it and been through the process, um, and actually has clients now, I mean, that's who I feel I have to go with. And I hate reversing staff's decision. I listen to the tapes. I think nothing against staff. I think you guys did a great job. I think you followed the process well. I just think there was possibly a little confusion, possibly, that where I seemed, the, seemed the focus was a lot on the wrapping and maybe where the buses were going to be wrapped, if it was going to be on site or off site. Um, I know they have to take that into consideration, but again, to me, this is more of who's going to be able to sell the advertising, who's going to give the county taxpayers the best return on their investment. And I think the firm that we've had for the last several years is the one that can do it. Yes. I just don't think we should go for the large. I, I don't know how long that lull will be of bringing somebody else in and them having to find new people to, to bring, you know, new advertisers. It could be a while, and we could lose revenue. And we can't, I can't allow that to happen and, you know, lose revenue for, for our citizens. Yes. So. Commissioner Stark. As I stated again, I would prefer that we put our, our own um, assets on the buses, but um, in going through the proposals and, and um, looking at the scoring of our 
um, experts that were on the committee, I note that except for one person, everyone said on tab F, price and revenue sharing proposal, the um, nod was very much to Mad Graphics that the county would receive more revenue from Mad Graphics um, price and revenue sharing proposal. And then um, it's interesting that at the first go round, by my calculations, they seemed tied. They were. Is that correct? They were. So then um, they went further and deeper into into this, and um, and then Mad Graphics. It looks like was pretty. Was it unanimous? Was number one? First time, yes. Yeah. So um, so uh, I would say if if the reason that it, I also look at their client list, um, which is very impressive, and and I think they br would bring, I'm sure they would bring their work with their client list to sell advertising. So um, I'm going to disagree. It's not our client list. It's, it's the current company's client list. They're not our it's client mad, list. mad Graphics. No, no, I mean the other company. I'm looking at Mad Graphics client list, right? Um, well, I thought you said sell to our, uh, our of the Of the businesses that they have helped um, with marketing and advertising campaigns. And um, I think it's an impressive list. So I just I disagree that they're not a marketing and advertising company and that they couldn't sell marketing and advertising. So so the, the staff definitely said price and revenue sharing. Mad Graphics was the winner on that. Um, they do sell marketing and advertising, and then they are unanimous ranked one over two. So I don't see any reason why I would go against staff recommendation. Thank you. Mr. Marion, I was going to make a motion, but do you want to? I'll, I'll make my motion. OK. I'm going to go to the original presentation based upon the information submitted that the, the committee get to look at. So this is what, when the RFP is gone, all the paperwork's done, they had a discussion all the way through. At the end of the discussion, the only two things that came out initially was one about the driving of buses to the site, which would only lead to the local vendor uh, having an edge, having it real close by. And the other was whether it would be Avery, Avery versus 3M, and they are already using the top product they have, and they already showed their qualifications of having the best certification you could have with it, which Mad Graphics showed us today. So that initial recommendation, actually, they won it without even the local preference points by that presentation. With the local preference points, it was even stronger. So I'm going to make a motion to reject staff's recommendation based upon all the information you've heard, awarded to Blackjack, the second-rate for firm. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. All those, in, all those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, like sign. Nay. Seeing none. You have a nay. I have a nay. I have okay. a nay aye with staff. Okay. So motion passed four to one. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Mr. Chairman? Be that finished? Yes. I know we're about through for lunch, but I wanted to introduce I've had Emily here from the Pace Center for Girls. I've got Anya. <coughs> from the Pace Center for Girls. And Diane, thank you very much for bringing the ladies out there, really getting a good feel for how the government works. And they really appreciate the opportunity to be out here. So thank you very much for coming. OK. Uh, this time, we'll take a break for lunch and be back here at 1.30. Thank you.